Hello everybody, today on the Model Box we're going to be doing something a little different and taking a gander at the brand new-ish Bachman Trains. Ah, Ryan, my new tank engine! He's finally here! Now, before we get started, this video is not made for kids. I will be showcasing dangerous tools and toxic materials that are potentially hazardous. Children should not have access to these, and please remember proper safety techniques. Thank you. Now, before we dive into the model, I wanted to talk about the packaging. Bachman's packaging isn't anything new, at least box-wise, if you can even call it that. It's still this terrible blister packaging. Ugh. The plastic prison is your standard Bachman Thomas and Friends blister. It allows you to see a lot more of the item over other styles of packaging. One thing I just don't understand is how engines and honestly anything that is kept in this style of packaging is still being sold like this to this current day or even was in the first place. Now I understand when the Thomas range released they were literally like $25 at launch. They were cheap model trains for kids to get into the hobby. Now I get it, they kinda still are, but for the price that you're paying for the engines these days, brand new, just give us a normal damn box! Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? All the other ranges by Bachman come in protective boxes. Look! The end scale range comes in this, the narrow gauge line comes in these really nice boxes that honestly the HO should come in at this point. Then you have the large scale range and they don't come in giant blister packaging. They come in normal sized boxes! Like, mm! And to top it all off, the item just kind of sits in this plastic with no protective film or padding. This can easily scratch the paint, especially because of the gloss coating. And to get the engines out is always a hassle. I always cut here and here to get mine out. I only saved the card and warranty info, the rest just gets recycled, which is the only good thing about this caca poop. <sighs> Anyways, Ryan in the show is introduced in the 70th anniversary special, Sodor's Legend of the Lost Treasure. He's a bubbly, eager, and hardworking engine brought to the railway to help out with the building of the Hardwick branch line extension. Ryan's basis, on the other hand, is based on the Great Northern Railway Class N2 side tank steam locomotive or GNR Class N2 for short, I just call them N2s. The class was designed by the GOAT Nigel Gresley and introduced to the rails in 1920. That makes Ryan over 100 years old now. Wow. Now that he's removed from his plastic prison, we can get a better look at this very shiny guy. First impressions? I like it. I like it a lot. But he does feel a little on the lighter side, nothing some weights can fix. From first glance, the detail on this guy is really nice. I like seeing Bachman step up their game with each release. It's also really nice to see a return to the open cabs. Well, sort of. Now, there's no reason the inside of the cab should have been blocked off like this. There's room to spare in here. Definitely not terrible, there's just more they could have done. The detailing along the boiler is pretty snazzy too. The fact that we got 3D handrails is great, despite it being made of plastic. And this was probably done for the fact that he has molded pipes. I'm not sure why they did this, as the range is 8 and up? It might have something to do with the UK toy laws, I'm sure, but this is such an important detail to Ryan, I really wish he had them. Back to the positives, the lining is applied so lovingly. The cab number and lettering is as well. Applied with the golden lettering too. Now the face is pretty much perfectly molded, and the details aren't too bad. Baby! One of the final details I really like is that they molded the brake rigging to the chassis block. It's not as pronounced as I would like it to be. Maybe a 3D print is in order? Heh. <laughs> yeah, but not too bad. I think this is a pretty solid release. Now he's off to the workbench for some mods. Now that we are at the workbench with Ryan, I thought it would be fun to try something a little different with these projects and show you, the viewer, how to improve your Bachman models for those uh, on a tighter budget. Here's the parts I'll be working with today. Brass buffers made by Mark Kits. These are round coach buffers. A bit hard to find, but they're so worth it. A 3D printed Marklin brake pipe. This is the older design made by Jamos, I believe. It's closer to the CGI look. Lamp irons made from sewing pins. And a screw links made by Romford. 
First thing to be removed is the hook and loop couplings, as most of my engines use the screw link and three link systems. I'm leaving the base for the hook and loops untouched for now, as they could very well end up sourcing the couplings again in the near future. First details to come off are the lamp irons. Using the X-Acto blade, I'm going to try to pry the brake pipe off for later use on the back end. The buffers are easy, just pinch and wiggle them and they come right off. Don't worry about the paint chips, the brass buffers or whatever you end up using will cover those. Same thing for the hook. Good grief, he's naked! Same mods apply to the back end, we just won't be removing the tail lamp. Now I'm getting faint memories of my first Bachman Thomas. Because the base of the buffers is molded, I'll be cutting those off because the brass buffers have them. Here's the difference between both sizes. The brass ones just feel closer to the CGI model. Uh, so I uh, ended up taking the model apart and removing the lamp as I'm going to mask the ends off for painting. So if they get nicked, I'll be able to paint that. Alright, so this is the test fitting of the screw link, and I actually just put a spring in just for giggles. This is the back end of Ryan, just to see. Yeah, look at that. So that'll be really good once I give him some weights and he'll be pulling some long freight trains. Oh yeah. Having tension on that coupling is really good. Yeah, baby. Get it, jiggle. Yeah, get it, get it, get it. Well, I ended up sanding as I should have just done that in the first place. Oh well. Now I'm gonna hand paint it as I really can't be bothered to spray paint. Alright, light coat of primers on. Time for the red. I think I'm going to satin spray the running board instead of gloss, as I eventually want to do the same to the body. Running board is looking good. Now, I wasn't originally going to paint the face, but I was lying to myself. Mm, okay, looking good, looking good. Just test fitted one of the screw links on the back, and it still fits. And I even tested the front one, it fits as well, but it's not there, it's invisible. <laughs> now it's time to do the face. Oh. Oof, he's cooking. The front end has been put back together and everything painted accordingly. The face, like mentioned before, is also repainted to help darken and bring out the details with shading. Now for the last mod, the wheels. I completely forgot to talk about the wheels earlier. Yeah, I could have edited it in, but... <laughs> for some ungodly reason, Bachman didn't give Ryan counterweights? Like, <laughs> he has them in the show! His wheels are the same ones used for Oliver because his are accurate to the CG model, kind of, which are used for Thomas and James, but those ones have the counterweights. So why not use those ones? Better yet, why not use Edward's wheels? Ugh, okay. So for the time being, because I'm on a silly budget, I will be making the counterweights from Plasticart, using Thomas's wheels as reference. Alright, these are all painted up and ready to go. There's actually seven made rather than six. I made an extra one just in case because you never know because they're all going to come out slightly different. So, you know, whatever works. Time to put them on the choo-choo. Now, this is just temp work, so this is fine for now. But I think that about wraps up this guy. Uh, hi, this is actually not true. I did two more mods that I sadly didn't document well. <laughs> uh. I went out and got him a DCC decoder by lock sound and gave him weights. And now that's done, I can safely say I'm more pleased with the model I have now than what I was before. I really do think the base model on its own is actually fine for anyone who wants to pick him up. He's a solid release. I'd recommend him. You probably want to see this guy running, right? Amazing. Hey, thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, subscribe. It would mean a bunch. Thanks again. Watch your leg, Ward. <laughs>